Vai pra fora. Good. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He that has the Son, that he that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. It's plain and simple. It's the same message preached by the apostles, preached by the apostle Paul, that Jesus saves, and only Jesus saves. There's coming a time in your life that death will happen. You were born to die. And in our life we were born in sin, and the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You cannot get to heaven by religion. You can only get to heaven by Jesus Christ, who said he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And those are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other means for you to be saved. When Jesus said, I'm the way, there is no other way. When Jesus said, I'm the life, there is no other life but that in Jesus Christ. And when Jesus Christ said, no man has access, no man can get to the Father, no way to get to God in heaven except by him, there is no other way. That message is for all, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that doeth good. So you can rule out. I'm going to heaven by my good works. I'm going to heaven because I'm good. I'm going to heaven because I'm a Catholic. I'm going to heaven because I'm a Jehovah Witness. I'm going to heaven because I'm a Baptist. And I say you burn in the flames of hell with those identities because the only mark that you need to be is to be born again. Jesus Christ said you must be born again. A true Christian is one that has believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, as their faith, as their hope. Only rest upon the finished work of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is the message of all mankind. That Jesus saved. And only Jesus Christ alone. Psalms chapter 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Don't follow the ways of man that reject God in their scorning. Come out amongst them. Come on to the life. Come on to the one that's Jesus Christ. God said, come now. Let us reason together. If you've got solid pushes that hate Jesus, you've got people that hate the message of God being preached, come out amongst them. Don't even give them your business. Step out and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. You're not going to get right with God when you settle in the world. The Bible says, marvel not if the world hates you. Know that it hateth me before it hateth you, the scriptures in blood. And the true love is not that that person over there that rejects God, not that person that hates Jesus Christ. There's no love there because the Bible says God is love. And the love of God is that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish. That's love. Without God, you cannot know love. For God is love. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And his, new, and his law does he meditate day and night. Day and night. The word of God. The word of God is given by the inspiration it is given without error. The King James 1611 Bible has been given to mankind by God the Holy Spirit. This is your instructions on life. 
This is what to do and what not to do. And what to do is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. That's the first thing you need to do in your lost condition. The very first thing the Bible says for you is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't go any further. And it's completely honorable, it's completely right for you to think that that guy is foolish for going over there and screaming at us every Saturday morning because that's what the Bible says, believe it or not. The Bible says that when God has to call men to come out and scream at you and get up and preach to you the gospel, that method is foolish. But mark the words that the message that that preacher preaches is not foolish. It is life. It is the truth. And it's the way. And it's the Lord Jesus Christ, John 1.1. 1, 1. Now, you got to make sure it's in the Bible. Here it is. I'm not going to give you any of my doctrine. Because my doctrine doesn't care, doesn't matter. It's not going to get you to heaven. But what God has said through His Word, what God has given us through the King James Bible, that is the words of life. That is the truth. Sanctify them, sanctify them through the, Thy Word. Thy Word is truth. So the very first thing you got to do in order to get saved is step out from those corners. And that's a big, bold step. Because if you're going to step out and trust God, you're going to see that those scorners are going to scorn you. And you see what those scorners do to people who preach the gospel. And don't be a fear. Fear God. Come on out and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Tell that world that you don't care about them no more. And tell God and Jesus, I want to step out for you. Come. Listen, when we get off into eternity... A billion years with no time. They told the beach farmer's market is going to have no value in the eternal life. Absolutely no value. You probably won't even remember Daytona. What is Daytona? And yet, if Daytona Beach Farmer's Market were to be the place to have your name written down in the Lance Book of Life, that would be all rememberable. That would make this guy mad over here that in his assembly that you stepped out and received Christ as your Savior. That the Word of God is being preached, that salvation is being preached, that your name being put in the Lamb's Book of Life, you can get eternal rewards. You can get into eternity through God the Father. But for, uh, Psalms chapter 1, you got to come out. you got to get out of that world. God's not going to meet with you while you're still doing worldly things. I talked to a guy yesterday, oh, I'm going to use the world means to reach Christians and it will not work. You'll produce worldly, if I can say Christians. When God says in Isaiah 118, come now, that means come, get over here. Get out of there, come over here where I am, and God is not where the world is, and the world's not where God is. You gotta step out. And don't be afraid. Oh yeah, you can sit there at that chair, you, you can close your eyes, bow your head, say, Lord God, I want to believe what that preacher says, and, and Jesus, and everything that that preacher says, I want to trust and believe. But come on, step out. Tell that world you're sick and tired of them. Step out. The Bible says, with the heart man believes unto, unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I'm confessing with my mouth that I am saved, that Jesus is saved, and it's a wonderful, great life. I don't see anybody stepping up and saying how great that alcohol is, how great those drugs are, how great that is. They're not up here. I'm not preaching. I'm testifying. I am giving the glory to God. I came out of the world. I came into Christ. How wonderful and great things are. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And bringeth, fruit, bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he does, doeth, it shall prosper. Stepping out, 
receiving Christ as your Savior is likened in Psalms as a tree that's been well watered. A tree that sits by a little pond of water, and he stretches his roots out to that water, and Jesus said, I'm the water of life. That tree is being drawn in by life through Jesus Christ, through the water. Water, if you go without water more than you go without food, you'll die. You can live longer without food than you can live without water. Man needs air, water, and food. And when the Bible likens for a tree, it doesn't mention fertilizer. It doesn't mention the soil and the nutrients of the soil. This says by water. Let me go back. Planted by rivers of water. God that made the body, not evolution. When God made these perfect bodies that work so remarkable without batteries, without having to be plugged in, God knew that as far as the intake, air, water, food, God says water is more important than the food. And yet when it comes to the food of man, the Bible says man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And to become saved, to become born again, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible likens in Psalms 1 as a flourishing tree, as a fruitful tree. There's nothing more delight than go up to a tree and find out it has your tasty fruit on it. Whether you like apples or oranges or apricots or even nuts in California, you like a tree of a fruit and you would like that tree to say, there's the fruit, come pick me. Everything's healthy and everything's well. That would smile your face. If there was a if there was an orange tree right here producing oranges that were tasty and fruitful, these people over here in the vendors would be very mad. And this tree would be very empty of people taking the free fruit. And yet you will not choose the free gift of God, which is Jesus Christ, which is eternal life. A flourishing tree that has life. In the garden there was a tree of life that would give you eternal life if they were to eat that fruit. That tree is, is gone, it, it is in glory, it is in heaven, it is unaccessible to man today. But to attain eternal life is not to take of a fruit. Attain eternal life is by the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of God who is God. And your faith and trust in Him will get you your name in the Lamb's Book of Life, will get you to be with the Father after you die, present, absent from the body, and present with the Lord. But the Lord says, I can make you a tree that's fruitful. I can make you a flourishing tree if you were to take up Jesus Christ and drink of Him daily. Now there's some people that take that literally and drink Jesus, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about spiritually applying your life in prayer and in the Bible and in seeking God for wisdom, for knowledge, and for understanding. There's nothing more graceful than a tree that's flourishing on a hot day to get under its branches and sit in the shadow of that tree, in the cool of that tree. And yet when Jesus Christ was on this planet, on this world, he came up to a fig tree, he was happy to find figs on it, and he found no figs. And he cursed that tree. That was a tree that did not produce its fruit. And it angered Jesus. And I'm here to tell you, if you are a born-again, Bible-believing Christian here, and you are not producing fruit, you anger Jesus Christ. Now you cannot be condemned to hell, but you can have your life condemned by wood, hay, or stubble at the judgment seat of Christ with no fruit, no silver, no gold, no precious stones. You chose to be a tree, but you chose not to be a tree of fruit. I'm a tree that produces fruit. I produce the works of Christ. I produce Christians. 
by Jesus Christ. You see, the Bible says, as far as what we do, I have planted, Paul says, Apollos have watered, but God has given the increase. Many, many years we've been here, we produce seed of God's Word and sow it out. We have no idea what that seed produces, what it produces, how much it produces, and we realize Satan takes some of that seed. We realize some of that seed just dries up into a plant that just withers away. We realize that there are seed that grows up and grows amongst the thorns and grows amongst the weeds and doesn't flourish anymore. And yeah, I hope at least one seed from this place, from this ministry, will flourish and produce other fruits. And a man that were to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ in the eyes of God would be likened to a fruitful, wonderful tree that has a water source. And that water source is the one that said, I'm the water of life. Psalms chapter 1 also says, The ungodly are not so, for are like chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Now that doesn't mean that, okay, I'm wicked, I don't believe in God, I'm not going to stand in judgment. No, that, that means you're going to stand before God one day, you're not going to be able to give answer. You will not be able to put a title on yourself as innocent or no fault. And yet Jesus Christ before the Roman government, Jesus Christ before that dying thief says he's innocent. To find no fault in him. And yet, sinner, God can find fault in you and it's called sin. For all have sinned. And yet there's a Lamb of God, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. That sin that you have cannot be done by money. Your sin cannot be taken care of by a phone booth or a whatever booth. Your sin cannot be taken care of by doing good things. Your sin can be only taken care of by the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. That is it. And we stand here to preach to you that you're going to hell without Jesus. In order not to go to hell, you must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. That's what we preach. Amen, brother. Thank you. I always get a nice warm feeling when I come here. Oh, thank you so thank you. much. Yes, Amen. it is. It's the Word of God, not me. It's... One thing I don't want to hear when I, get to, when I get up there, get away from me. I don't know. Again. Yeah. That's the worst words ever. Imagine God telling you, or well, not you, but telling yeah. somebody, go to hell. I'm glad it's him and not me that I to make that decision. Amen. But, uh, All but, upon Jesus Christ. Yeah. But what I want to hear is welcome, my, my faithful servant. Amen. Well, well, done. well done. Well done. Amen. Okay. You have a good day, sir. Thank you. They leave you. They let you do this, what, two hours every Saturday or an hour? Oh, this is all our own. No, 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 no. I mean, do they have, do you have a time limit? We try to be here for 45 minutes. Okay. The average preaching time. Yeah, because okay, last week when I came back, you were gone. Yeah, we, well, we've been having opposition, so we've been coming different times. I know you have. <laughs> well, so, well, See, right now we came early, so they're unprepared for us. There you go. Just like, just like Christ said, they, they hated me first. That's right. Yes. I we'll read that bro. this morning, too. Yeah, we'll see you, brother. God bless you. Have a good day now. God bless you. The ungodly are not as a, a tree that is flourishing by the water of life. You're likened to a dead tree. You're likened to a tree of no purpose. Like these palm trees. What on earth do these palm trees settle for? They don't give you shade. They don't give you fruit. They give you these broken, dead limbs. And yet, you find in Solomon's temple that there are images of palm trees and them. I look at the palm tree and say, ew, okay. And I see one palm tree, I've seen 200 million in, in Florida. And God sees them, he says, I see them as beauty. 
And God looks at a man that has not Christ in his life and, and by faith and belief, and God says, you're a dead, rotten, miserable tree. You have no life. You have no leaves. You have no fruit. You're dead. You're rotten. And the only thing I can do with you is perish you off into hell because you have not trusted that living water. You have soaked yourself in water of drugs and alcohol. You have soaked yourself into man's religion. You have soaked yourself into anything but the word of life, Jesus. And God says, you are miserable. You are rotten. You are sure not like that righteous tree I see over there flourishing. And that tree only has a righteousness because of that water that's been soaked up by the roots. Carried into the trunk. Carried into the branches. Carried off into the leaves and fruit. Inside that tree is the water of life. Inside of you who have not believed Jesus is filth, is rottenness. Well, inside your bones is sin, it's cankerous, it's cancerous. It will kill you. And without Jesus, you will suffer and burn in hell. That's what you do with a dead tree. You cut it up and you put it in the fire. You take a healthy tree and you take the fruit. You prune that tree. You do everything to that tree to produce more fruit. And a dead tree gets cast into the fire. Quote in the words of John the Baptist when he preached at his baptism. He said the axe laid to the root and those trees will be cast into the fire without repentance, without God. And once the fruit is picked, it's marketed, it's consumed, and yet Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. God says that those who have the faith and trust in Jesus Christ Righteous. People, I wouldn't look at my life today and say righteous. I'm a sinner. No one would dare ever to say if they were to sit in the, in the car with me at red lights would say, uh, that's a Christian. Yeah. Right. There are things in my life that you would look at and say, I doubt it. And yet I have righteousness and you are able to receive righteousness but not of ourselves but of Jesus Christ. And when you have taken on the righteousness of Jesus Christ Psalms chapter 1 verse 6 For the Lord knoweth the ways of the righteous. And Jesus said I'm the way. So when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, in the eyes of God, you are now righteous through His Son. You are saved through the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who is God. You have taken on the attribute of God, Jesus' righteousness that we never, ever have. And we become fruitful, wonderful, flourishing trees that please God, that please other men. But when the world comes up to the tree that has been watered by the water of life, they take a bite of that fruit and they put Yuck! What is that? What are you doing? What is that taste in my mouth? Get it out of here. Because you have not tasted of Jesus. You have not tasted of the Holy Spirit by faith through the finished work of the gospel that Jesus is able to save your soul. For he had died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That little baby that was born in Bethlehem grew up and died on a cross for your sins and my iniquities. 
And that same baby that died on that cross can give you eternal life. That man that died on that cross is the love of God, according to John 3.16. Now, Psalm chapter 1 speaks about two trees. One tree full of life by the water of life, Jesus Christ. One tree dead, withered, no life, no Jesus Christ. So when we come to back to John chapter 3, let's look at what John the Baptist said, and the one that preached about cutting wood down and casting it off into the fire to burn. There is a man in the Bible that was blind, and Jesus did something to him. And he said, Jesus, I see men walking as trees. And men are likened to trees in the Bible. There's all different kinds. There's all different shapes. There's all different fruits. There's all different everything. And when we look at a man as far as a live tree or a dead tree by Jesus or without Jesus, uh, without Jesus, we see a particular passage in the Bible, John 3:36. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. So if I were to come to the water of life and drink of that water that is able to save my soul, John the Baptist says, He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. That water of life that gave that tree life in Psalms chapter 1 is giving eternal life. Man, not only if the Bible says my feet are pleasure to God by preaching the gospel of peace, but God looks down and says that tree, it is beautiful, it is lovely, and there are Christians that say, man, that fruit is delicious. Thank you. And the only thing i got to say for what the tree I am is I am watered by the water of life. The life that's in me is the life that's in Christ. It ain't me. It ain't my life. It ain't what I do that can save your soul and give you life. It's that water of life, Jesus Christ. John chapter 4, I believe it is. Honk, if you love Jesus, come on. Notice how they stop when I say that. Hey, people, all you do is encourage me. So that water of life that comes by Jesus, according to John the Baptist, is water of life. Not only am I planted here in the earth, but I have heavenly roots planted in New Jerusalem forever. The Bible says that I'm not in heaven. I mean, I'm not going to heaven. I'm already in seated in heavenly places. My body hasn't made it yet, according to the Bible. So, the water of life, Jesus Christ, salvation in Jesus, can give you eternal life. It has so much nutrition to give you eternal life, Jesus Christ. The sin condition we are in, the wages of sin is death, but the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world can transplant me to where that water of life is and can transplant you to where Christ is for you to be able to get that water of eternal life. You can't give a, a, a tree alcohol to be watered by. That ain't going to do you nothing. It's going to kill it. You can't take drugs and give it to that tree and spec life. I don't know what the drugs would do to trees today. Look what it's doing to the, to the people. And you cannot give a tree religion to feast on because what is religion to a tree?
Nothing. But if you were to bring water to that tree, that tree would drink that water up and thirst that tree and become life. And so you were to take your life and say, well, I'll give myself a little religion. <coughs> oh, starving, thirsty, oh, I'm dying. I'm not getting nothing for religion. It ain't doing nothing for me. I said, well, I'll give money to charity. You throw that money and it blows away. And somebody else takes it and uses it. It didn't do you no good. And if you were to come to Jesus Christ and say, Jesus, I'm a miserable, rotten sinner. I am not worthy of anything but your mercy and grace. I'm not even worthy of that. I'm just a dead old tree. Maybe no, but I'm dead. I have no life in me. If I continue as I am, they're going to cut me down, they're going to cast me into the fire. And there will I burn. And that's what happens with old trees. And yet, if you were to come to Jesus Christ and say, Jesus, I need to be saved. I need to get right. I need to believe on you for life. I need that water of life. Christ will take you, transplant you over to the living waters. And as you suck in from your roots that water, that living water, that life will come into you. And you're not going to produce fruit right away. But you're capable of being flourished, being a lively tree. Being lively in Christ, your life. By Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. And when we go back to John 3.36, He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life. Well, that's interesting. Going back to Psalms chapter 1, the trees, there's a good tree, there's a bad tree. There's a tree that is flourishing, there's a tree not flourishing, dead. And John the Baptist says that eternal life is by the Son. And without the Son, you have death. You are without Christ. You have no life. You are dead in trespasses and sin. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. You either have life by Jesus Christ or you're death without Jesus Christ. And when the plant has eternal life, eternal water of Jesus Christ, it's eternal life. When a plant does not have that living water, does not have Jesus Christ, it perishes, it's tucked up, it's cut down, it's cast off into the fire. And thus the Bible says there's no life. There is no life. There is no life without Jesus Christ. You will be cut up from the ground and you will be cast into the lake of fire that burneth forever. And you will burn. And you will burn. And you will burn. And you'll burn for eternity. John says that's the wrath of God. But 
according to Psalms chapter 1, if you are that tree that's planted by the rivers of water, the living water of Jesus Christ, both Psalms chapter 1 and John 3.36, it's eternal life. And that eternal life is through Jesus Christ alone and only Jesus Christ. And holy water can do you nothing. You must have that living water, Jesus Christ. <laughs>